Hey guys, welcome back to our sustainable training series and today we're going to be talking about biofeedback in the context of a strength ratio assessment that we perform quite often and how all of our athletes begin with us. This is namely for our athletes who have types of pain, knee pain with squatting, back pain with deadlifting. In fact, those are the two examples that we're going to talk about today. We're going to explain how we can help fix knee pain with squatting and how we can help fix back pain with deadlifting. We just need to know where to start and then how to improve someone. And the assessment lets us know where to start. The biofeedback, which if this sounds like a foreign concept, specifically a biofeedback involving a forward flexion test, then you should probably watch our previous video. But the biofeedback lets us know exactly where to start and that's the point of the assessment. So Kyle here is going to be squatting when he has knee pain, though he does not and has had not had knee pain uh, with squatting or uh, back pain with deadlifting for quite a while, if ever. But he's going to pretend as if he's one of these uh, athletes starting with us looking to resolve such pains. The first thing I would do with Kyle is I would ask him to tuck his chin, round and hang. And let's say now at his longest position, which we'll call his baseline, he gets to his tippy toes. The idea is that that is where he is with however much stress he's come into the gym with. Whether he drove here after work, whether it's first thing in the morning, that's our baseline reading. He's been having knee pain when he squats, and I'm gonna ask him, Kyle, what weight have you been squatting with that you experienced knee pain? 250 for 10. He experiences pain with 250 for 10. Well, we've got 75 pounds on the bar, He's gonna do 10 reps and then we'll see what happens in a fake example of a shortening of range of motion. Now, when we look at people's movement, we look to see if they're standing up faster than they're going down to prevent any sudden strain or sprain. If there's some subtle shifting or slight asymmetry, we don't try to bring that up or instill fear, especially in the moment for the athlete. But we just try to have them move as comfortably as possible. We don't want to fit a square peg into a round hole, so if there's a way that they can move as comfortably as possible, we want that versus the textbook example. So now Kyle's going to fake a shortening of range of motion, because that really wouldn't have shortened him, to where he lost from the tippy toes to the mid shin. So then we revisit, Kyle, you've been squatting 200 plus pounds for multiple reps, but we find that 75 pounds created stress. It seems to make sense why if an athlete had knee pain and they've been just squatting ahead at 200 pounds, that 75 pounds being a stressor would indicate that we need to lower the bar, build some stress tolerance there, and slowly improve the plan uh, as we go forward. Now, something that could happen is that an athlete doesn't yet have pain, but in theory, if they're doing 200 pounds, but 75 pounds gets them tight, that would be an indicator that they should probably improve their abilities with lighter weight for multiple reps and probably uh, follow a periodized plan where they're not only hitting weights hard or in one specific rep range. So we are going to have Kyle see if he's recovered, meaning he's back to his tippy toes. He tucks his chin, rounds and hangs. And we say, look, you've even gained some more range of motion. If he's gained more range of motion, that's his new baseline. We want that baseline to be forever increasing. So we're going to move on next to a deadlift. Kyle's gonna bring the bar out of the rack and down to the floor. When I watch Kyle move, very similar to the squat, I want to help him find a position that feels most comfortable. Whether he is more upright in his posture or more bent over, it doesn't matter to me. Whether he's a sumo stance or conventional, it doesn't matter. I want to help him find the most comfortable position possible because he's having back pain with deadlifting. So let's say that was rep nine, this is rep 10. After rep 10, he tucks his chin again and we find that he loses flexibility. Now this might be hard to believe, but this happens all the time when we see a lot of overuse injuries and 75 pounds stresses an athlete who might have been deadlifting 315, but kept plowing through. So you can see the importance of objectively finding how stressful something was, 
because what will commonly happen is I'll say, did 75 pounds feel stressful? No. No. Right? But we objectively measure that it was because range of motion was lost. Now, there's a lot of talk about squat mechanics versus hinge mechanics, but if you think about it, and someone changes their posture to where there is no pain, then we want to get them out of that spot moving as comfortably as possible. Then, once we've gotten them out of that position, we can talk about hinge versus squat mechanics as you see fit or as works with your training methodology. But especially with an athlete who's in pain, it's all about getting them moving as comfortably as possible and measuring what's stressful for them, which is often quite lower down here than they imagine, especially if they're used to going hard up here. So these two examples provide knee pain with squatting and back pain with deadlifting. So we don't have to avoid the exercise. We just need to objectively measure where the athlete is at currently and how to progress forward, which we recommend with a periodized plan. And for our weightlifters, you can go back if you've experienced such pains and see our sustainable training series for weightlifters. So you can incorporate this biofeedback with a periodized plan, which is what we do for all of our athletes. Thanks guys, and we hope you enjoy.